Hey folks, in today's video I'll show you how to paint up this burrowing horror, also known as a boule. So I went ahead and based this all in black. I just used on a brush black paint to base it all. Um, and the reason that I did this is I wanted to really kind of up the contrast. So I'm going to, this is going to help provide kind of a darker um, recess. So to start out, I'm painting this lower half in the steel lesion drab, pulled up some reference photos, and I really liked the look of having those um, uh, top plates a different color from the bottom. It helps provide a little bit of um, just something different with this, and it's definitely something you can apply to any kind of creature that has uh, scales or plates or stuff like that. Adding a little bit of um, uh, like design to it, you will see in like snakes and reptiles and stuff like that, uh, and bugs, they oftentimes do have those designs. So that, oh, that, that's all in. I'm going in with Agrath Earthshade um, to just fill in those recesses, really letting this kind of seep into the crevices and bring up that contrast again. Um, so yeah, and you'll notice that the Steel Lesion Drab, I didn't do like, I only did one coat. I didn't do two um, because I knew I was going to be doing a whole bunch of layers. So I wasn't as worried about um, really covering up the black. And then that also let the black kind of in those uh, crevices shine through a little bit. So now that I let the shade dry completely, I'm going back in with Steel Lesion Drab and I'm painting this in um, kind of not going back over all of it. Um, I, I think I actually do a close-up of this later to give you a better idea, but I'm kind of doing it a little streaky. Um, I like the look of this for that kind of works really well for scales, or if you have something that has really big claws, it gives kind of that um, worn, like uh, keratin-y looking um, uh, aspect to it. This is also something that would work really well on like turtle shells or something like that. Um, so you can see that's starting to give a little bit of that texture to it. And now I'm going to keep adding it on layer and layer and layer. So I'm adding in Steel Lesion Drab mixed one-to-one -one with Talarn Sand and doing kind of following that same process, but I'm focusing a little bit more towards the uh, bottom of each of these scales. And here you can see I'm bringing you in closer, come close, to really give you a better idea of the technique that I'm using throughout this entire miniature. Um, and it's just, I'm getting a decent amount of paint on my brush and just pulling it down. And so it is providing that kind of um, broken up streak. And you can use this, I'm sure, for a bunch of other kind of techniques. You know, if I was doing, wanting to have a little bit more of an even highlight, I wouldn't be as streaky. I would, you know, make sure to kind of cover it more. So yeah, that's providing a little bit of that kind of cracks and, and all that. And now I'm going in with Talarn Sand, doing the same thing, but focusing, each layer is focusing a little bit closer and closer to that tip. So I'm putting a little bit less paint on each of these scales. And I'm letting it dry between each one, um, just so that I'm not kind of, I'm not doing wet blending. I'm, I'm really adding, building up these layers of dry paint. So now I'm going in with Carrick Stone and really focusing just on the tips. Uh, I'm almost doing kind of a little bit of uh, like not quite edge highlighting, but I'm kind of using the side of my brush more than the tip. All right, so now we're going to kind of do that same process with the upper plates. And to do that, I'm, I mixed uh, shadow gray with black. Um, I liked the blue kind of tone of shadow gray, but it was a little too light. So I just added a little bit of black to it to bring it down. And I'm gonna go through and base this all in. I'm being careful not to cover up what I've already painted. You know, don't want to mess that up. Following kind of the idea of, I like to start like bottom up or inside out. Uh, I find that that kind of helps so that um, I'm not accidentally getting paint on something that I've already painted and having to go back through and touch it up, especially when you have something like this that has so many layers that you've slowly built up. All right, so I'm gonna do kind of that same process 
all over again. So I'm going through this time with null oil, um, keeping that slightly different shade than the underside. And I'm going to just go paint this all over, really focusing in on the crevices, kind of places where I want to bring out the creases and cracks in this sculpt. Just going all over with this. And if you wanted to tie maybe those two colors a little bit tighter together, you might use the same color shade rather than two different um, colors. But I liked kind of, I was trying to challenge myself with this mini to kind of up my contrast a little bit. Um, I tend to I've looked at the miniatures I've painted recently and gone, you know, th that's something that I can work on a little bit more. Um, I think it really makes a miniature pop. Um, and it's something that if you are looking at the miniature, you're painting it and you're just a couple inches, you know, a foot to a couple inches away from it, uh, you might be able to make out details and colors and stuff like that. But once you put it on the table, it might blend together a little bit more. So upping the contrast um, and the differences between some of the tones you're using, I think really helps with that. Uh, I'll get back to that in a second, but I'm using Wazdaka Red. I like this kind of pinky red for the gums, just using a very fine brush to get in there and paint that all in. Back to what I was talking about. Um, yeah, something that I've been trying to remind myself to do a lot more is take breaks and hold the miniature out at arm's length. That gives you a much better idea of like how much detail can I see? Am I getting too, am I adding too much detail and it's actually muddying up the miniature rather than focusing on bringing out some key uh, aspects of the mini. And so holding it out arm's length gives you a better idea of what it's going to look like on the table so that you can see what do I really need to focus on? Am I good? Oh, if I up the contrast, it will bring it out even more. All right, so now I'm going in with shadow gray. And this one actually, there's quite a lot more contrast between this and the base layer. Uh, it does dry down a little bit darker, um, but I was okay with that. I liked the streakiness of it. Um, it gave it a little bit of, um, you know, looked kind of like maybe something's, all of that dirt that this thing has been burrowing through has been scraping through um, across the shells. It's kind of, as well as adding that like natural coloration to it that you often see on shells where it's not one solid color there there's kind of a layering of colors to it and this is also to, uh, similar to a technique that you could use to add um, some like uh, battle wear and tear to some armor stuff like that probably not all over the thing but uh, focusing you know a, a few streaks here and there to add some some uh, battle like oh this has gotten a slash or especially if you've got like an a shield that looks like it's supposed to be enamel places where the enamel has been uh, uh, broken off yeah now I'm going through with uh, pallid witch flesh and shadow gray just kind of bumping that shadow gray up a little bit and I'm really focusing um, on the edges I'm kind of mostly using the side of my brush to get kind of those um, edges of each of these plates, really popping up that contrast, bringing out these edges. Um, you know, um, I, I'm not sure if I'd call this an edge highlight because it, it is that kind of streaky effect, um, but it's that kind of idea, just allowing it to streak on over. So now that that's dry. I'm going to go through and I wanted to add, add a little bit of a sheen to it, um, a little bit of kind of a metallic. So I trying this new technique that I just kind of was like, I'll try it. Hopefully it doesn't fuck up the whole mini. So I'm dry brushing on iron breaker very, very lightly. Um, I'm, I'm kind of testing it out on my thumb to make sure that I don't have too much on my brush and then very lightly dry brushing it. And it gave the, the miniature a little bit of a sheen. It's something that um, I think you can see a little bit better in person than on camera. But it did, um, yeah, I do in just a moment kind of show you the painted side versus unpainted side with this dry brush. And I, there you can see a little bit of a difference. So yeah, there's the unpainted and the painted. So it does it does catch the light a little bit. It gives that kind of metallic look um, that I wanted these bluer 
plates to have. So now I'm going through with dead white and a fine brush and painting the teeth. Now this is where I really kind of upped the contrast. I left the gaps between the teeth black and I was very careful, you know, going in and painting each individual tooth at a time. It took me quite a while, but you know, I put on a podcast and had fun. Um, and I think that really makes these teeth look pretty intimidating. So I decided instead of doing the technique that I had been doing on all the rest of this mini um, to just kind of take a shortcut with the um, nails and teeth, the talons and teeth, and I'm using contrast and skeleton horde. I think this is great if you're doing any kind of bone, teeth, nails. Um, it just gives you a really great look uh, and all of that. And that also provide a little bit of difference between the nails and the rest of the plates. And then just to kind of bring up the tips of those nails, I'm going in with some uh, Pallid Witch Flesh and Skeleton Horde uh, to just kind of bring a little bit more contrast up. So I decided the eyes, I wanted to have kind of a glowing look to them. So I'm going in with Uriel Yellow to base them in and a um, fine brush. So I'm just kind of very carefully painting around the eyes. Um, the nice thing with this sculpt is the eyes were very kind of round and pop out. So uh, it made that easy to find where to paint them. And then to add a little bit of dimension, just kind of dotting in with flash gets yellow and kind of bringing that yellow color up even more. I liked how it contrasts with the blue and the red and I'm just very carefully dotting in a little bit of white with dead white just to the very, very um, center of the eye, kind of adding that like where the glint of light catches it. So on this side, you'll probably be able to see it better with it zoomed in just ever so carefully going in, dot, dot, done. So there we have the finished miniature. Uh, I really liked how this turned out. I think it's gonna look great on the table. I can't wait to like throw this out there and have the party be like, ah, we have to fight this. Yeah, you could add it, add a base to it, but um, this one actually I found it sits very well, so I, you may or may not need a base, uh, but those can be helpful to give an idea of size to your players. Granted, you know, this is a little bit taller than most minis. So your players are probably going to get the idea of how big it is. A big thanks to our patrons, especially Joan. If you want to support our channel, you can head over to our Patreon page and check out the perks of being a patron. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, I hope you give it a like and share it with somebody else who's picked up one of these uh, burrowing horror minis from Reaper. This is from their Bones line. Don't forget to subscribe because we make videos here every week and we'll see you next time on Roll for Initiative. Bye.